instantaneous velocity. Sometimes the average velocity is all we need to know about an object's motion. For example, a race along a straight line is really a competition to see whose average velocity is the greatest. The prize goes to the competitor who can cover the displacement in the shortest time interval. But average velocity, but the average velocity of a moving object can't tell us how fast an object moves at any point during the interval delta t. Average velocity is defined as a change in position over time. This tells us the average velocity for a given length or span of time. If we want to know the speed of, or velocity of an object at a specific point in time uh, with a radar gun, we need to know its instantaneous velocity. Watch what happens when we look for the instantaneous velocity by reducing the amount of time that we take to measure displacement. So we're going to measure displacements at various points in time. If we measured the displacement of 100 meters and it takes 10 seconds, we go 10 meters per second. If we measure the time required for 10 meters of displacement, it's still going to give us a velocity of 10 meters per second. If we measure the time required for an even smaller displacement, smaller displacements, smaller times, we get the same ratio. As this time becomes very small, we're finding the velocity at a point in time. So we can estimate the, the speed at instants and times by looking at it over very small time intervals. Kind of goes beyond what we need to know at this point, but instantaneous velocity is simply how fast you're going at some point in some time. Now, uh, to, to, to describe motion in greater detail, we need to define the velocity at a specific instant in time along the path. Such a velocity, again, is called an instantaneous velocity. Note that the word instant has somewhat diff a different meaning in physics than everyday language. Instant is not necessarily something that is finished quickly. We may use that phrase, phrase it just lasted an instant to refer to something that lasted a very short time interval. For example, instant coffee, cup of noodles, which you just add hot water to, or instant oatmeal. They don't take zero time. They take some time, but they happen quickly, or their preparation is quickly. In physics, an instant has no duration at all. It refers to a single value of time. And one of the most common examples that we can use to understand instantaneous velocity is a quick look at the speedometer. At this point, we see the instantaneous velocity. And at this point, the instantaneous velocity is zero. So the number that the speedometer points to would be your instantaneous velocity. Uh, the instantaneous velocity is defined as the ratio of the displacement per unit time as the change in time goes to zero. So it's called an infinitesimally small time interval. And we're just that just tells us the displacement per unit time over a very, very short interval. What we're going to do is to look at graphs and we're going to interpret graphs to determine the velocities at points in times. The question is, how do we know that the velocity is constant? Let's just take a look at various points in time and determine what the velocity is. Or let's just take a look at this graph together. I just want to remind you that a graph has a y-axis and an x-axis. And this is a graph that has speed on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So this measures our speeds at various points in time. So we have a speed, this is a small speed, larger, larger, and larger yet. This is time as time is increasing. So let's look at the speed at some point in time, at this first time here. If we draw a line straight up and then go straight over, we get a speed. Let's look at another time. If we draw a line straight up sometime later, time is marching on, and we go over, oh, that's interesting. We end up with the same speed at various points in time. So how do we know the velocity is constant? The y value for velocity remains constant as time progresses. Let's look at this. When is the velocity increasing, decreasing, or constant? 
Let's just look at a couple examples together. In the first instant of time, time's going from zero to some time. The velocity starts off at t equals zero, nothing, and then some time later, the velocity is this value. In that first segment, in this segment, velocity is increasing. It's going up, or let's just stay away from the zero. In this next segment, the velocity stays the same value at various points in time. That is a constant velocity. And in this segment, the velocity is approaching or going back down to zero. That's decreasing. Some interesting things happen down here in negative territory. Your velocity is increasing its numeric value in a negative direction. So you actually are speeding up in that segment. That's kind of unusual, even though the line's going down. But let's look at this one here. Here your velocity stays the same value the entire time, so again, it's constant. What we're going to do in this portion is to determine the average velocity of this graph as time goes on. Let's look at the average velocity of A. We can define the average velocity or find the average by taking the average of two values at various points in time. Those values might be the initial value and some final value and when we're taking the average of something, we simply add the two numbers together and divide them by the number of numbers that we're sampling, and we can find the average speed. Let's find the average speed of graph A. I'm going to take this and copy it for future use because we're going to use it again and again. And if we are interested in finding the average velocity, at various points in time, let's switch colors, something contrasty. At two seconds, at two seconds, my velocity is one. And then some other time later, at six seconds, my velocity is still one. So my initial speed is one meter per second. My final speed is one. One plus one is two divided by two. Oh, my average speed is one. Why is my average speed one? Because my speed is not changing. Another way to find the average speed is to use the middle value of the speeds for the interval. So again, if we, if this is my starting and this is my ending point, the middle value for speed, the mean value or the middle value would fall there. It's one meter per second. So the answer for the average speed for graph one is one meter per second. Let's move on. Let's find the average speed now for some other intervals. And I'm going to copy the equation that we used previously. Let's find the average speed for some other intervals. Let's find the average speed from zero to one second. From zero to one second, that's zero seconds, and that's one second. And by the way, we're dealing with graph B now. So at zero seconds, my speed is zero. At one second, my speed is four. So this is my initial speed, zero. My final speed is four. Zero plus four divided by two is two. Or another easy way to do this is just to use the middle value for the interval. And the middle value would be two meters per second for that interval. Let's look between one and three seconds. Here's t equals one. Here's t equals three. So if I start off at four and end up at four, four plus four divided by two is two, uh, is, excuse me, four plus four divided by two. Four plus four is eight divided by two is four. The middle value there is four meters per second for the average velocity. There's one thing I'm neglecting. These velocities are positive in sign because the values for the middle value fall in positive territory and positive territory. Let's find the average velocity from three to four seconds. I start here with four. 
at three seconds, four meters per second of speed at three seconds, and I end up with zero meters per second of speed at four seconds. The middle value falls right there. How about that? Positive two meters per second. Go from four to five meters, four to five seconds. I start here at four seconds, and then I end there at five seconds. At four seconds, my speed is zero. At five seconds, my speed is down here, negative four meters per second. The middle value will fall right there. It's negative two meters per second. And here's an interesting case. So let's erase. And we're going to draw or find the average speed between three seconds and five seconds. So at three seconds, my speed is positive four meters per second. And then at five seconds, my speed is negative four meters per second. Using the graph to interpret, draw down at five seconds and then over to the axis. In the middle value, halfway between three and five seconds is four seconds. My average speed is zero meters per second. That's quite interesting because half the time I had a positive velocity and the other half I had an equal but opposite negative velocity. The tug of war between the positive and negative velocities are going to give us no displacement whatsoever. So beautiful. Let's just take a peek at our answers just to confirm. And there they are. We're going to use these answers in the next slide. Previously, we looked for the average speeds by looking for the speeds through different time intervals, let's say between 0 and 4 seconds. Now we're going to find the speeds at instants in time, or various points in time, or the instantaneous velocity. And this is just a matter of using the graph to interpret. So the first question is, what is the instantaneous velocity at two seconds, or better yet, what is the velocity at two seconds? To find this for graph A, we go to the two second mark, we draw a line straight up, and then we go over. The speed at two seconds would be one meter per second. And that's actually not an average. It would be an instantaneous velocity at that point. The next slide, we're going to be using graph B to interpret this. What is the speed at two seconds on the second graph? So we get down here, zero seconds, one, two, draw a line straight up. Where it hits the line, go straight over. The speed, or the instantaneous velocity at two seconds is positive four meters per second, and it's that speed at that instant in time. So the average speed, or the instantaneous speed, rather, is positive four meters per second. And it's interesting, these graphs show constant velocity and varying velocity. In the first case, we have a velocity that stays the same value as time progresses. And in the second graph, the value for velocity is changing. So the instantaneous and average velocities could be different.